Valley Club, don't miss out on Purple ISO 8. The Radio After Treat Store is only going to be alive for a few more days. Where are you going to get your Purple ISO 8 after that? We're going to discuss that in this video and the rest of the mailbag questions because it is Mailbag Monday. If you're ready for that, then you need to do Valley Club. Find that like button and let's go smash it. Welcome back to the Valley Flying channel. I am Valley Flying. I hope you're having a great day. In this video, we're going to talk about Purple ISO 8 and we're going to dive into the mailbag to answer your mailbag questions of the week. Before we get to that stuff, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button for more Marvel Strike Force content. Minimum of five Marvel Strike Force videos per week on the channel. Usually more. Usually this is a place of positivity and inspiration. Little, little down today. It is my birthday. It wasn't wasn't a great celebration this weekend. Don't really have anything planned. So a little down about that. Plus the community is really down about Marvel Strike Force, a recent announcement for the character release cadence. So normally we were a little more positive i'll try to be a little more positive uh upcoming but uh yeah let's get into these purple iso 8 store uh we have these ions these uh actually radioactive treats that you have to get these ions these purple gear now the purple gear is going to be required for dark dimension 8 to get into that to get odin unlocked and it looks like it is launching very soon we have the store ending in five days from now this has been the main source of purple iso 8 uh giving us radioactive treats through this giving us ions and then now where is it gonna go my suspicion is that it's gonna go either into raid rewards war rewards or crucible rewards uh as as far as like uh, weekly rewards for crucible or weekly rewards for war or maybe seasonal rewards for war seasonal rewards for uh the raids let me know where you think uh the purple iso 8 is gonna go but uh important psa guys remember to spend all your radioactive treats once the store goes away this may be worth nothing so you got five more days to do it don't let this stuff go to waste uh but yeah let me also let me know where you think this uh purple ice weight is gonna go once this store expires let's move forward to your mailbag question of the week and big shout out to everybody that left a mailbag question if you want to leave a mailbag question make sure you're a member of discord the link is down below go to the mailbag channel and leave your question there first question of the week from brother vader why doesn't black panther shuri have a uh, tech tag and if we go into the game right now no black panther shuri does not have a tech tag she's a mystic character the original shuri does have a tech tag and if we scroll through these okanas they do have some different tags here black panther shuri is mystic nakia is skill we have the original black panther is mystic the original shuri as tech we have Okoye also as a skill character. The new 1MM Black Panther is also a mystic character. And Killmonger is a skill character. And Baku is a mystic character. So mystic skill seems to be the choice there. We have a tech character in Shuri. But uh, I, and a lot of the reason they put these tags on are for gameplay reason and game balancing reasons. Uh, they do want to thematically, you know, align with the characters. Uh, but, you know, so some characters that could be a few different things. So Shuri has some mystical powers from the black panther spirit uh the original shuri got all of her innovations and stuff from tech but yeah i guess uh, there's a few different ways you could go from these with these characters and uh the reason ultimately they choose to put these tags on ours for gameplay reasons one of the original discussions from these tags came from when they introduced this military tag i'm not sure if killmonger had it when he was originally introduced but i know a character like punisher did not when he was obviously a military character so the community asked that question back then and they said that it's more for game balance combat reasons and as often as they can they'll try to align these character tags with the, them thematically but it's more for game balance and combat reasons that they do these tags all right hey valley thanks for the answer i mean yes for the movie but we character characters like captain britain in the game alpha flight doesn't have much more popular movies so this is a follow-up question from last week when are we going to get two more eternals why did they do two more eternals I thought originally they did have plans for the uh, more Eternals to come to the game. At least data mines, it did indicate that. But because Cersei Icarus were so powerful, plus I think the Eternals movie didn't do as well in the box office as a lot of people were expecting or a lot of people at Disney were expecting, uh, that kind of made them not want to do it. But uh, shouldn't the Eternals have the same shot? I mean, the one Eter I don't mean the Eternals from the movies, but the ones in the comics, Mutants versus Eternals versus uh avengers versus celestial you should read it if you have time i know they're not as popular but we got unpopular characters running in the game so i mean they deserve our team uh so next envoy meeting give them some love get a uh, cc or dark dimension a team in the future so uh with character selections though they don't really ask for input on that that's something that 
they get some suggestions from Marvel. Marvel tells them when movie tie-ins are gonna be long, which is why you see a lot of the games with the same characters released around the same time. But uh, yeah, I think they kind of have a free reign to choose who they want, as long as Marvel does approve it, as long as it's not some like weird character or some character that doesn't align with what Marvel is pushing the comics that time or, or the characters that Marvel want to be pushed. So I think uh, the scope could do whatever they want. And when they do ask for suggestions, it's not normally with character suggestions. They they there's like these are the characters that are coming out and sometimes they tell us sometimes they don't but they don't really uh, ask us for opinion on that so it's up to them if they want to do the eternals i'm just trying to think of why they wouldn't but yeah they could add the eternals at any time if they want it's all up to them and what they think is going to make the most money for their company and valley as end game players i really soon started taking alliance war a little bit more seriously I was wondering what are the top defensive teams or what do you use an example in the cargo bay if that makes much of a difference? So I don't know what the top war defensive teams are right now, but I'll show you what I use. Uh, I'm not a heavy war player and my alliance isn't like a heavy war alliance either. So I'm not sure if this is the best, but I'll definitely show you what I'm using and hopefully gives you some ideas, my brother. All right, and I'm in the med bay. I'm not sure if it makes a difference too much. I know they've done some switches to the rooms and they switched the room rules and things like that. But uh, we have infinity watch here. Always a tougher team because they start with safeguard. They start with immunity. Uh, Nebula, if she does her ultimate, I believe, starts with very early evade. So uh, tougher team to beat. They, they are beatable by a lot of different teams. They just take a little while. Kind of annoying. We have almost full out of time team here. We have in place of Black Knight, we have Agent Venom, though. We have an infestation. Very, very small infestation. Haven't put a lot of uh, love into infestation because I don't put a lot of love into war teams especially war defense teams so they're pretty small we have alpha flight because they are a very strong uh, war defense team needed for the raids so i built them up for the raids so i have them there we have bifrost this is not a very strong team kind of here just because i don't have anything better right now but uh, yeah this is definitely something switchable this is pretty easily beaten by a couple uh in, in eternals pretty easily uh we have the extreme x-men with nightcrawler rogue there another easier war defense team spider society is a pretty tough defense team with especially with the room rules that we have or the season rules that we have going on right now we have uh what would this be this is a very high british team we have some tangled here we have morgan lefay we have america chavez here we have quicksilver here america chavez is kind of throw off the turn order for certain teams we have super scroll secret defenders and black knight and then another tough team in the hive mind so tough teams in nine and ten the rest of them are kind of uh, and i guess this one is tough because of the season rules They're not going to be that tough next season uh, the rest of these are pretty easily beaten i guess this is uh you need a tough team for alpha flight as well but that's what i'm using on war defense not sure if this is the best war defense out there but this is what i'm using my brother i promise my next post would here be short so here it goes like you try to be an optimistic player person outside of the shadow dimension miscommunication i don't see one positive thing oh man uh there's a lot of that they've done now they did make that bad announcement i think it overshadows a lot uh the good thing is we still confirm them at four months and then have them full seven stars by six months so uh that part didn't change the initial part doesn't feel as good and i do want to you know enjoy these characters a little more in the front end maybe not as the back end but that that part doesn't feel good but as far as some good changes you know i see the graphics update as something positive i know the majority of the community doesn't because in its current state is still in beta and it didn't look good when was launched but i see that as something down the road that can help to make more changes in the game implement more changes a lot more easily once it's once it's working properly i don't think it's working properly yet uh i think the alliance management changes are a good thing that they added the raid store changes they can go further with other stores they made a minor change to the arena store uh and just some of the events seem a lot better although in grand scope of things those orbs make it seem worse but uh they, they, they seem to be a little more generous with events. I, I haven't looked at too many numbers, just kind of a general feeling about that. But yeah, they, they, there's a lot of negatives, but there's there's positive as well. They may be doing well, but it seems like a permanent crash up they're going for. My question is, why does it feel like they don't listen to players on the most important monetary issues, but seem to go above and beyond even uh, when it's not game changer, but no, it'll have the appearance when they've been listening to players and the envoys try to be positive, but the first time I just don't see it. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, they're a business, right? So they want to do a couple things. They want to balance uh, the needs of free-to-play players, giving out uh, shards, giving out stuff to everybody uh, just to make the game balance, and then also catering to the people that spend money because at the end of the day, they are a business. They want to make money. 
personally i feel that giving a lot to free to play players making the game fun that's when i personally wanted to spend a lot of money i think that's when the community did as well they're kind of making it cater toward the higher end spenders and trying to get people to spend a little bit more uh, I get why they're doing it. I don't like a lot of the ways that they're doing it right now, but um, I'm going to wait and see with a lot of this stuff, my brother. I, as you, If you play the game for a while, you know they've made a lot of good decisions over the years, a lot of bad decisions over the years that they've made less bad. And uh, a lot of times when things sound bad initially, uh, my initial reaction is, oh, this is going to be bad. But when it's actually implemented a game, it's not as bad as I thought. So I'm kind of a wait and see at this point. But yeah, there's 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 a lot of bad changes that uh, they've made recently that doesn't feel good. But I also see that they're attempting to make the game better as well, whether they're successful in that or not. You know, sometimes they fail uh, miserably with that. But I do see them attempting that, which is why I still have kind of a positive outlook with the game. But uh, yeah, it's 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 they they do need to make a few changes. The community's not happy, and it doesn't feel good. Someone that likes to make content for this game. Hey, Valley, greetings from Singapore. Do you know why Scopely hates us and trying to ruin the game? This is a hero collector game. The fun of the game is to get and use the new tunes. Yet they're choosing to delay the releases for their events. Thanks, Scopely, for ruining the game. But blog post is a joke. Does Scopely think we are dumb fun? How is delaying character releases fun? Meaningful rewards? How is getting less than one shard per orb for 100 shard unlock a meaningful reward? It'll take more than 100 orbs to unlock the character at that rate. So I think they were not when they're talking about meaningful rewards. They're talking about like other things, resources and things like that. And they do want to focus on that jackpot because even though the release sucks for the majority of the players, there's that small percentage chance they get that jackpot, gets that instant unlock. So I think that's kind of what they're focusing on but i agree i want to use the new characters i want to do the new releases for the events one thing that they didn't say in the blog post that they did say on the envoy call previous to the blog post is they're not going to require characters that hadn't had their release event which is if you look at the blog post phase one and phase two right now we're in phase one for most of the annihilator characters or at least Thanos and gore we haven't been in phase two We've been in phase two for a gladiator. So after phase two is when they would want to be doing events for characters that require characters, not like they did with Shattered Dimension, uh, where it required these characters while they are still in phase one before their phase two has happened. I don't know if that made sense, but uh, it shouldn't be. They, they don't want to be it to be a pay to play experience. Pay to win has kind of always been there in this game and mobile games, but they don't want it to be a pay to win experience like Shattered Dimension would have been. They said that was a mistake. So. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'm still waiting and see. I'm still trying to be positive with a lot of the stuff. Hey, Valley Fine, I know there's dozens of videos covering the best new war defense teams at the beginning of the season or as teams are released. What are the strategy videos on Warm's layout? As free to play, most Dolphin Alliance are getting crushed by four and a half million Spider Society. We're seeing a resurgence of Heroes for Hire that looks like Old Meadow's weapon X can't handle. Not looking for Seekers like Kraken Alliance, just someone to stay competitive world of 2 million punch-ups. Uh, I am not sure what the best war layout. Like I said previously, that a war question. I'm not the best war person. It's not a game mode that I've enjoyed just because of the timing of the attacks. You know, like Crucible, you could get all your attacks in going right away. With war, that's not the case. You look at your attack, sometimes there's a room that's either too big or too small, so you gotta wait, come back in an hour or two, and you got a different rooms, and they either too big or too small. So I, I never liked War for that reason. I didn't want to wait around to do my attacks. I wanted to jump in and play the game. Uh, so for me, I never really focused on War too much. And I've also actively avoided being a captain and a leader, so I'm not really sure where the layouts are for War. So apologize, I can't help you too much with the layouts maybe there's someone in the comments that can help you and if you know something about war where it was a good resource for the best war layouts let me know down in the comments but as far as the four and a half million spider side teams or old metas a lot of that is because of this room rules right now that we have for war the global bonus that we have right now uh the 10 percent primary sets of defending war ready allies that's always there with the extra 20 percent to war ready city hero allies that's why spider society that's why the heroes for hire is kind of having a resurgence this uh this season and it's not fun hopefully these rules are away soon and we get something else uh besides the spider society defensive war meta hey valley fine two questions one do you think the game will get a better soon 
or do you think things will take a while and two on a more positive note which character do you look forward to unlock blade or nimrod let's get to that question uh as far as blade or nimrod probably nimrod they're both gonna be required for the orcus raids at least if the data mines are correct and blade is in fact gonna be in that night stalkers team which is the solution for the mystic orcus raids uh but yeah i guess it's gonna be nimrod because we kind of have a solution if we're teaming up with some mephistos on that orcus team raids with the the mystic section using some bifrost teams uh the tech section is tough though uh the pegasus doesn't really cut it there's no uh character like myth, myth mythic character like mephisto i guess that uh, kestrel is a mythic character but uh, there's no character at the level that mephisto is right now so getting the full orcus team up uh, nimrod omega sentinel that will be uh fun as far as when they're gonna unlock though i don't think i'm gonna buy nimrod so i might actually unlock blade before if he is in fact that legendary character that's gonna be unlocked by the annihilators and the illuminati we will see though and as far as your first question when do you think the games will get better hopefully sooner rather than later like i do like uh marvel strike force i do like playing marvel strike force uh these stannis orbs don't feel good the gore orbs the illuminati orbs they didn't feel good hopefully they find another way that they can monetize the game and get more money from players do it instead of this release method because it doesn't feel good as a player it doesn't feel good and i play these games because they're fun and i want to like get this moment of feel good and uh I'm not getting that as much in marvel strike force so hopefully it's uh, sooner rather than later but it's all about the devs intent if they want to just make the players happy or they see the profits uh, diminish they'll probably make some changes if they see the profits go up on this which i'm not sure why they would seeing all the backlash from the community uh then they may keep it so we'll see hopefully the devs uh look towards the majority of the player base free to play players and uh re recognize that the krakens they spend all that money so they could beat up on players and if there's nobody to beat up then uh why are the krakens spending all this money hey valley greetings from california two questions so the game doesn't offer the feature to locate your current rank on the monthly events do you know how we could know about what rank we are based on the rank number unfortunately no with some of these leaderboards events they do have your placement in this with this it is a blind leaderboard so uh they could have added that if they want for some reason they don't want you to see where you is i think as long as you're getting this stuff getting all this stuff you should be good for some of the okay rankings now maybe not the top 2000 but if you get in the top two percent at least you can get some crimson gear if you're outside the top 10 percent it kind of sucks and i think they do that for that fomo right if people don't know where they are they do that with the they did that with the blitz rankings black when blitz unlocks were a thing you don't know where your ranking were so you just keep blitzing to get as high as possible uh the good thing about this is they were limiting people with these milestones like people weren't able to get the final milestone previously like six months ago because of the, some miscalculations and they would, they would do that uh then they'll give out some points at the last minute well now at least we're getting the milestones but uh yeah the ranking rewards are still blind they're giving a lot of extra uh points for these uh, month-long milestone events recently but i think that's more for these leaderboards and like the good thing is you can do all these milestones but the rank rewards does make it tougher uh but yeah there's no way i think that is done on purpose though second question how are we supposed to be global second note on dark dimension 7 my current team is cabal black knight and gamut they get whipped before i'm able to make a move and when i can take a turn weaver has a charge on it. it's truly annoying any suggestions thank you so this is the global note in question mission seven dark dimension seven these weavers are mostly annoying yeah so these are these were the primary targets when i was trying to take them out uh this weaver here and then we got another weaver here now uh you're going with cabal and black knight i had nightcrawler you have gambit so we had very similar teams and what i noticed with that cabal team very good outside of the dark dimension which is why they brought them but in dark dimension you really need their cooldowns aligned you need that cooldown from um special the special from iron patriot you need that ultimate from namor aligned if you could get those back to back you're gonna do a lot of damage so hopefully you could get your cooldowns uh set up so that you could do some great attacks uh but some days you just it won't happen like there would there would be days on my first run that i'd be going through the attacks and like nothing would happen like they would get all their attacks and i would just die just trying to reset those cooldowns doing basic 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 either getting rid of weaver's charges or just trying to get some cooldowns for the next 
node and then you just gotta time everything right and hopefully everything is timed right so that when you go in weaver doesn't have any charges you get that special from iron patriot you got that ultimate from namor uh hopefully you got an ultimate from gambit as well and you could use all of those all in the same turns while they're vulnerable that's kind of the big wombo that you're gonna do for me it was that special from nightcrawler giving some stuns out and then ultimate from nightcrawler that i'm trying to pay to play out with that uh, pair with that iron patriot special so hopefully that helps you uh it is yeah, there's a lot of patient bringing cabal in there because uh they need their cooldowns all set up they don't have their cooldown set up it is a it is a few days before you get those cooldowns set up but i try to play towards that and hopefully that helps you my brother hey there valley hopefully having a pleasant day it is it is it is pleasant it's pretty chill it's pleasant though uh, i have a question about the dark dimension the dark diamonds take my pockets all the way to three diamonds however i'm waiting for him to show back up in elite store for weeks and he hasn't what should i do well you could either just be patient because he's eventually going to show up there or you could get impatient and start spending your cords, depending on how much you need that third diamond for Apocalypse. It is a pretty crowded store, and there's been weeks that go by before I, the character that I want to pop up actually shows up. I think I was waiting like about three weeks for Old Man Logan to show up there as well before I finally got that uh, some extra diamonds on him. So yeah, it's just a crap shoot. Uh, it's just RNG. Sometimes you get good RNG, sometimes you get bad RNG. If you want to speed up the process, you can spend some power cords. There's no guarantee it's going to speed up that process though, because you might get bad RNG with every power cord you spend. I would definitely not go into the hundreds where your power cord spending because it, you know you're, you're spending for RNG, but. Yeah, it's just a lot of patience, my brother. Has anyone else came across the issue in Arena where if you have Old Man Logan versus Old Man Logan at the end of the battle, both and Lingans have infinite revives, making them impossible to win? Yeah, anytime there's a uh, Old Man Logan versus Old Man Logan, the battle's going to time out because they won't kill each other as soon as they do the special. They get their revive once back, and then they're doing all their moves, and you're hitting them, so they're getting turn meter. It's just... Uh, yeah, it's just an endless loop. Kind of like uh, back in the day when Wolverine versus uh, Merc merc uh not merc shield medic versus both of them they were wolverine had so little damage back in the day and uh, shield medic had so much healing they would be in this endless loop when it was the uh, two of them now it's old man logan and old man logan and last but not least question of the week i have a purple isolate question or two what are the best tunes for purple isolate that is more than two questions uh but let's go into purple iso 8 let's go into dark dimension planner and see what i have right now for dark dimension 8 right now i have city gonna do the spider society right now legendary and cosmic is done so we have two of the nihilers not gore mephisto because we just uh, unlocked mephisto recently after dark dimension was announced and then super scrolls there old man logan is there so one legendary the rest of them are cosmic we have apocalypse done already as far as city villains there's not a lot of great choices right now we do have the hive mind which still has value we do have superior slash sinister six that does have some value although their value is going down they're getting older and older as we speak but if we were to go in right now i think this is the way to go red goblin gives some uh hive mind value some craven some slayer some lizard and then we would go back to vulture and that would be the team that i would bring in for city villain right now i'm not sure if i really like this team though so i may hold off on this team and see what city villains we get uh by the time i'm ready to go into dark dimension 8 maybe the night stalkers will be there at that time so i'm holding off on this as far as uh global villains we do have some of the orcas team members we do have some cabal team members not sure i want to go at this point but since uh, the cabal is a team that i like i'm gonna go there with apocalypse and then either nimrod or sentinel uh one of one of these orcas characters i'll probably do uh sentinel just because i have him unlocked at this point global heroes we have nobody for this section now for myself what i would lean into i'd probably still go black knight you may not want to do that because he is uh losing value more and more counters are coming up but black knight i think it would go with black knight sasquatch is very annoying on defense trying to get into a large sasquatch is tough i would probably go offense with my illuminati since i use those characters on offense a little bit more and then probably going back in the nightcrawler i think nightcrawler is probably the best extreme x-men off of the team and the legendary cosmic where do you have done so this is who my picks are right now spider society i think that's a pretty locked in choice not sure about this choice here not sure about the rest of these characters here i definitely want apocalypse and then not sure about these characters here so uh those are just what my thoughts are right now for dark dimension 8 let me know your thoughts let me know who you're leaning for for dark dimension 8 make sure you spend all of your radioactive treats you got a little more than five days as of this video's launch so hopefully you get all that stuff and get a lot of 
purple iso 8 in anticipation for dark dimension 8 and odin hopefully you got some value from this video if you did leave it a like it is free for you tremendously helps out the channel and if you want to check out some of my other videos to see what are your best use of dark promos and dark diamond credits check out the video up there and i'll see you guys next time have a great rest of your day hulk fist bump valley flying out